morning, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield Belly. Good morning, Rob, but fall is a coming. Not soon enough. And not soon enough. I agree yeah. with that. A hundred degrees today, maybe? Eh, give or take. And give how was on the football field yesterday? I'll get to that in a second. Okay. First, let's introduce. <laughs> she is. Uh, she walked in with a large suitcase today, like that Deal or No Deal program with Howie Mandel. But with a smile on her face. Big, Always a smile. Big dollars, big money, big money, big money. <laughs> And what was that? Remember that TV show or the, the, the game show, Big Money, Big Money? You yeah, hit the yeah, little yeah, stopper. Yeah. And you, yeah. you got that little gremlin thing that you lost all your yeah, money. Yeah, you didn't want the gremlin. Yeah, what was that called? I forget. I can't remember that either. Uh, anyway, let's say good morning to Maria Lawrence, an all star. Good morning. Good, good to be here. Great to have you. Thank you. How's the uh, school bus traffic out there today? <sighs> A lot of school bus traffic. I mean, one minute makes all the difference in the world, right? And I was a minute late this morning. So, How was your uh, trip to Cleveland? Anything <laughs> interesting happened while you were seeing the son-in-law wrestle? Um, the, the wrestling show was great. Cleveland is a really cool city. I mean, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you Very could cool. spend a whole day yeah. um, there. And we spent probably three hours before my car broke down. <laughs> Which is the other side of the Which is another way to spend the, the whole story. day there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, it's fine. It's up there. I rented a car. I'm going back up to pick up my car. Yeah. So. It's a nice little six-hour drive to re- retrieve your car. Amen. Well, I'm going to stop in, in Cannonsburg, though, and sure. stay with a cousin tomorrow night. So nice. um, Because I have to get back Saturday for the Mountaineer game. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll be taking, you'll be occupying several seats at the Mountaineer game this, this Indeed. Week. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm, um, I've donated some and, um, mm-hmm. yeah, and then a judge friend of my husband's um, wants the other two, so. Cool. Uh, by the way, Rick Manning, thank you. Press Your Luck was the name of that TV show. Where wow. They, now, the next thing is, what was the thing called, Rick, that would steal all your money? It had a specific name, that little gremlin thing. I don't remember. <laughs> Rick, you, you looked that up and passed that along there. Press your luck. Too. Man. Okay, so when, when last we left the – and by the way, the answer to your question, Bill, is according to the uh, Field Turf International, uh, something or other, on, a, on an average 90-degree summer day, field turf surface temperatures can reach 165 degrees. So we had a kid mm. yesterday whose shoe melted. Mm-hmm. Uh, during practice, it it uh, it just kind of like broke apart, whatever adheres yeah. to the top of the shoe yeah. to the to the base of the shoe. And I had that happen to me a couple years ago too. It, on a day like that, it just can't take the heat. Now was that hot yesterday? Did you- well, it was ninety something yeah, yesterday. Okay, yeah. Well, and those tragedies, those two yeah. young people, one in florida and yeah. then one in roan county Al- alabama alabama, alabama. Yeah. sorry yeah. sorry Somewhere. sorry I yeah, mean, one, that's one, just... one was the head injury yeah right middle school kid. both right. of them were both they, ended up being none of them so were, they were not related. no not neither were heat related but you have problems with heat as well the skin burns so what 110 115 what, degrees? what i read it said 110 degrees so i know yeah. when my son played and they would have him do push-ups on that field turf he would come home and his palms would be all burned all when scorched. do you Ask when is enough? When should you not do that? The school uh, puts out a like. For instance, our practice today mm-hmm. has been moved to six p.m. Right, the yes, hottest yeah, time of the yeah. day. No, uh, it, it it really it almost can is. Be. I mean, it, the temperature comes down about two degrees between three and six. It's, uh-huh. it's not a whole lot yeah. of a drop, but as you yeah. go along, it uh, it gets a little bit cooler, relatively speaking, but not a lot. Now, this is the artificial turf. You get up to one hundred sixty-five. Yeah. Regular grass would that be what? Yeah, it, Reflect, it, it, reflected of what the actual temperature more, is. More so, yeah. yes, absolutely. And it says yeah. when you look up this stuff that artificial turf can reach surface temperatures 80, I think it's at 86 and a half degrees hotter than the surface would be on with mm-hmm. grass. Yeah. So that, that really does heat up some. Yeah. Well, and turf just in and of itself is wonderful, but just playing on it. I remember when my kids sort of transitioned from grass to turf for soccer. Mm-hmm. Man, the burns that you get just oh, slide tackling. And yeah, yeah. My daughter was a goalkeeper and she came home with a lot of burns all over. Yeah. yeah. And, and this stuff is actually better than the stuff we had. We didn't yeah. have, Okay. Not yeah. a lot of schools yeah. had it yeah. in the 70s. Mm-hmm. And they used to call it AstroTurf. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, that stuff was just like sandpaper. <laughs> and and hard as well. It had no give at all when you fell on it. Yeah. There was a, there was a little bit of a mat, but I think it had mm-hmm. like an asphalt yeah. base. And after mm-hmm. that mat, after a few years, kind of yeah. left yeah. its yeah. padding behind. <laughs> <laughs> you could bounce a golf ball up to the, the moon on that stuff, man. Our guest in this segment is Lisa Henry, 
And Lisa, of course, has uh, two roles, one with the Backpack Program, another with the West Virginia Education Association. It is that first title at which we begin the show where you can see she's smiling like a butcher's dog, as they say. (laughs) She knows what's coming next, and it's pretty good. Lisa, good morning. Good morning. Now, when last we left our bidding scene for these Mountaineer Penn State tickets, uh, Michael Height had chased away all of the noise with a $1,000 bid early on, and Maria topped it with a bid of $1,250 for these four seats. And that bid held through three days of pressure, Maria. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Here. She's a very generous lady, she is. Bill, could I have a build-up for the handing over of the tickets to Maria? Yeah, I'll sing. What should I sing? No, don't sing. How about Country Roads? Country Roads. Yeah. I I don't know that's a good idea. (laughs) It's not a good idea. Not at all. Thank you very much. I pass over the ceremonial four tickets, which are actually real, not ceremonial, to Maria And I will pass over the ceremonial check. And I feel left out. Well, you had your chance, my friend. You had your chance. And you're getting some grief here. I am on, getting grief, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could have very easily. But uh, I was expecting Gil Scrap to jump in the way that he loves football. I thought. <laughs> John's not a football fan anymore. He was at one time. It was. Not so much anymore. So, uh, Lisa, congratulations. Thank you, and thank you, Maria. Well, you're quite welcome. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Height and I sort of um, chatted, not um, not on the chat because he didn't take the bait, but he came to Rotary last week and I was like, dude, come on. He was like, well, I just tried to start high. Mm-hmm. And I said, and you did. Yeah. And it was really, I mean, as you know, we have tickets and I was certainly willing to give you a pair, but sadly you can't make it. Um, so... Um, but uh, a friend of mine, actually my daughter's godmother, and her husband are going to use one set, and then one of my um, husband's judicial friends um, from mm-hmm. Wheeling is going to use the other set. So the question that was still remains: How high would Maria have actually gone in the bid? I'm pretty competitive. And, I, and I'd said one thousand three hundred. What would you have done? I would have probably gone three fifty. I was worried height was going to go one thousand two hundred fifty one. You know, and then I was at like 9.59. Uh-huh. And then I was going to be mad. Because <laughs> you don't like to lose. I don't like to lose. So. Well, you didn't. You won. I did not. And again, the tickets are wonderful. The game will be. Um, Who knows? Will be a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, it's it's about the program and the work that Lisa and her volunteer team does. And, you know, much needed in the in the county so thank you thank you and they will be um with uh, volunteers will be at our facility today getting ready to um for tomorrow they get the facility ready get the line ready um for the bagging tomorrow and they'll take the bags of food to the school tomorrow so thank you but maria's gift is one of the reasons she's one of the more beloved people in the community she does a does a lot of this a lot of it undercover not not particularly visible but maria does a lot for the community well it's funny you thank you bill and i don't certainly do it for those reasons um when we uh inducted our new officers at rotary um at the installation dinner i won the 50 50 and it was like a 250 dollar my portion would have been 250 and i'm sitting there and i'm with all my fellow Rotarians, and I'm like, I can't keep this money. You know, I'm a fundraiser. I'm going to give it back. Um, and, you know, so it's it's about doing the right thing. And there are so many people in the community, the people in this room included, mm-hmm. who just do the right thing. I mean, we hear so often, you know, all the bad stuff and, you know, what kind of community is this? Well, it's a great community. It's a wonderful, so. it's a caring community. It's a compassionate community. Absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. And the work that I am privileged to do at Hospice of the Panhandle, um, you know, sort of lends itself to that too. Mm-hmm. So, Lisa, the $1,250, how does that fit into your budget? What do you typically spend in a month? In a month, so um, during the school year, it's approximately $15,000 a month. Okay, so, Bill. So you can still get in, man. You can still get in. Uh, yeah, so it, it takes um, grants, fundraisers, and um, 
personal donations like Maria's that that keeps the program going. Um, and it's really, um, you know, local businesses, local churches, local people that that donate because, like you said, this is a great community and they care about the kids. Well, that's nice. When, when will that money actually get spent? Well, I am going to go to the bank tomorrow. So, um, and okay, I got are... a day. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's good in now. It's good now. <laughs> Anybody with aluminum cans that Maria can use to <laughs> no, I'm not sitting reduce on the corner. this this deficit, please. Uh, yeah, so um, we are always purchasing food um, to keep the program going because um, with uh, 750 kids a week, I mean that looks like our facilities full of food and two weeks later it looks empty so it, it goes fast how much do you get from the state you get some food from the state do you not? no we do not oh, you do um not. Okay. we so last year um governor justice signed a bill for um, emergency food relief that went to the uh two uh feeding america food banks so the one that goes to berkeley county in the eastern panhandle and 50 of the other counties is mountaineer food bank so through them we were able to get a grant so i guess technically yes that yeah, is state okay, money yeah. through a grant that um, we are able to apply for but when the food truck comes to berkeley county do you get some of that food or not some of those we uh, so products. that um, we do, but it mm. is a process where you order the food and we pay mm. for it. Okay. Occasionally, they did start a pilot program for backpack programs where we get shelf-stable milk for free. So that is one item we get for free, but um, frequently our bills to the food uh, bank there um, in Gasaway is about $10,000 sure. per month. Mm. So, And they are able to source food in bulk which makes it cheaper for for the backpack program and the other nonprofits across the state to get food for which their communities. Was my next question, are we better off giving you money as opposed to food because you can get the food at a better price than we can? Yes, so I'd say in general, money is better because we can then use it um, with other donations and, and buy at the larger quantities through the food bank, um, through Sam's Club. And the, but food donations do help too, usually, um, you know, that is a small percentage of what goes out to the kids, but that gives us variety for the mm -hmm. kids um, because you're limited. We are limited what we can buy at Sam's Club and through the food bank. But um, when we get different kinds of snacks and cereals, um, it, it, it for the kids, it gives them some variety and also helps when we make the food bags for kids with food intolerances or allergy bags. Um, that gives us um, a chance to have a variety of food to make those bags from because we want to make sure all the kids, every kid who's getting the food can eat it. So um, us and we partner with Berkeley County Schools, their Office of Nutrition checks each student to make sure um, that they don't have a food allergy, food intolerance as well. And Berkeley County Schools packs the allergy bags for students that have serious anaphylactic reactions to food. And then we do the ones that are more minor, usually um, like dairy, red dye, um, things like that. It's a whole yeah. new world out there, isn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. and oh it's, my gosh. And it's a level of complexity that I had not really anticipated. Sure. I just thought Food would go to food, but that's not the case. Well, so many kids have nut very, allergies. Very, very selective. Uh, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of nut allergies, and mm. you would be shocked, I think. Um, for example, um, if you have a gluten allergy, mm. most brands of tomato soup have wheat in them. So something that you may not see. Even think. Yep. And then um, also um, milk and soy. A soy is mm. in everything. So if you have a soy allergy, milk, um, you really have to be careful. And it limits you know, what the kids can eat, which puts greater stress on families, especially if they are um, financially strapped, to have to, to do the search and sometimes buy more expensive food. Do, are these allergies recognized within, by the family and by the school? They must be. I just Yes, it has yeah, to be. Yeah. Um, they, uh, Berkeley County Schools has a, yeah. a form that, that doctors must sign, and they do that every year. So it, it isn't food dislikes. It's um, serious okay. intolerances and allergies. And sometimes you don't even know. Like, I have a couple weird allergies. Let's go down the B path now, Bill. Um, but my um, allergy is, like, to, just to crab, but not all shellfish. But if there's a cross-contamination sometimes, yeah. I've had the judge go out and 
quickly get me some Benadryl when I didn't have it at hand. Because you don't even, sometimes yeah. you don't even recognize mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, I mean, you all have to be super duper careful. Mm -hmm. with and, and we have certain volunteers that that's what they do, um, uh, that those food bags are done separately to make sure they're done carefully. Lisa Henry collected $1,250 from the very generous Maria Lawrenson today for four Mountaineer tickets to see Penn State and West Virginia uh, play in, uh, what is that, about uh, three days, I guess, here. Yep, let's uh, go. Let's, uh, and you have, a, you have a split family, if I remember. Yes, well, I, yes, I am, I went to Penn State. Uh, my daughter is a freshman at WVU, but I've lived here for 20 years, Um you know, I'm I'm cheering for the Mountaineers. They're the home team, the underdog. Um, how can you not love them? So you know, <laughs> and I've been heartbroken too many times by Penn State football. So only against <laughs> Michigan and Ohio State. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. The big ones. Yeah, the big ones. Otherwise, they seem to do pretty well. But WVU has a good team this year. Mm -hmm. This particular game is forecast to be a very close game. Well, that remains to be seen, and that's why they play the games, right? That's exactly, exactly right. right, especially when the rain comes down, because I looked at the forecast, it's like 84%, and I'm like, oh boy, got to get the rain gear out and everything. Right. So. A big crowd on hand, let it rain. That's right. And I'm going to guess about half of them won't know it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> but it is an early start, so that's helpful. A noon start is better than a 4 or 7 p.m. for this type of game, mm -hmm. because... You know. I understand. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, parking here. lots, uh, I've been there. Yeah, the blue lot is, uh, we'll be rocking. Lisa, yeah. you, another role you have is with the WVEA, where you put uh, your other expertise to, to work here, and the WVEA and the AFT are going to merge. And we yes, understand that's by next right. school year, Dale so, was telling us. Yes, so that is the goal. So I am uh, the regional rep out here in the Eastern Panhandle. I cover nine counties. And um, there have been talks for several years now about merging WVEA and AFT West Virginia. And the goal of that, which is the goal of all of us, is to make public education stronger, which benefits our children. So that is the big reason behind it. And so we're to the point talks are continuing i think they've they've ironed out all the big details and um, there's some small details still to be worked out but the plan is to have the vote in the spring by the two organizations and start working together after that and then um send the vote for the approval to the two nationals so nea and aft the national organizations need to approve it which they are on board and then um, we'll go forward being uh, one organization by September 2025. Has this been done in other states? Yes, it has. Um, it's been done in several states, and um, one that uh, that our my boss and our organization is talking to is Minnesota. They are one um, talking with them. They did it 20 years ago. Is done very successfully. Um, my understanding, though, is. Ours will be one of the first merged states where the teachers do not have collective bargaining, though. So a little different in that aspect. So when teachers pay their dues and they go to this new homogenized organization, on the national level, dues are usually kicked up as well, are they not? So, yes. So who gets them? So after anybody who joins after the merger, a percentage based on membership when the closing happens, a uh, percentage goes to NEA, a percentage goes to AFT. Um, but the bulk of the money does stay in, with the state organization. And then there's also local organizations as well. So for example, Berkeley County, Jefferson County, Morgan, they all have their own local organization and a percentage of those dues go to the local organization as well. Dale Holy. Lee and Fred Albert have both said they are not interested in being the new president of a new organization. Is That's Lisa what Henry they say. is Lisa Henry interested? No, I I am staff, so I am ineligible to be president. So oh. president is voted on by the members um, of one of their fellow members. So that is that is yet to be seen. So my understanding is they're going to take us through the merger, make sure everything's all good. Um, and then they want to pass it on to new leadership. Dale says he wants to spend time with his grandkids. Are substitute teachers eligible for membership? Yes, they are. And substitute uh, service personnel as well. So, And those do 
dues are at a discount because membership dues are based on income. And so as being a substitute, you don't make as much money. What's the new organization going to be called? That is a million dollar question. So right now they just have it a placeholder called West Virginia Merged Organization. And that is not going to be the name. So they have not even given us a hint yet as to what the new name will be. Interesting. And do you foresee any issues right now? Are you hearing that that people are like, wait, I don't want to do that? I mean, I know it's a vote, but obviously in the long run, you believe that, that this is going to become, um, I mean, that this will be beneficial to all those who um, are members. Mm -hmm. Yes. And from this perspective, this part of the state, which is what I know, is um, WVEA and AFT, uh, we don't have a contentious relationship. There's some history in kind of the southern western counties where it might be a little more contentious just from the past. Um, but the the two organizations, I mean, we work well together. We're starting to do um, um, joint things more together. And so we're looking forward to, you know, I don't need to compete with members for AFT. We just want everyone to be a member because it just makes us stronger um, altogether. Lisa, what's the percent of the teachers that belong to the union and what has been the recent trend? Um, I don't know the percentage, um, but um, the trend, so uh, several years ago, the legislatures passed a bill to take away um, payroll deduction for union dues and their goal was to hurt unions and it did we lost half our membership at that time as well did AFT um, so we are slowly building back to get back to those numbers because it's simply just you know it's one extra step that somebody has to do for membership it was much easier when it just came from payroll deduction which is what a lot of states do but in trying to take away the power of our educators other states have followed along um, and taken away payroll deduction and what are the benefits for a teacher then to be a member of um of one of the unions and you have 60 seconds to oh summarize those, so probably. so besides the the collective power you know trying to get laws passed um also you get the support system and also you have um legal backup you have representation so for example i go with um, teachers and staff to principals meeting to the board office and if if needed they also get legal coverage paid for as well and also we do training sessions and all all the good stuff too um, so it it's just a great support system especially for new teachers um, to be a part of that and to help get them the information they need because education law is very confusing um, especially in West Virginia amen Lisa great <laughs> stuff as always Thank you. And uh, congratulations once again on the $1,250 that Maria Lawrence and just forked over. Yes, I'll be smiling the whole way to the bank. That would be very nice. <laughs> yes, very helpful this time of year with the school year starting. Yeah. Maria, Absolutely. thank you again. Yeah. Absolutely. You. Happy to help. Lisa, how do people get in touch with you at the Backpack Program if they want to volunteer or donate money? Um, you can go to our website or Facebook page. Just Google Berkeley County Backpack Program, and that will take you there. Or our phone number is 304-268-0635. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, thank you to Rick Manning and to Delegate Paula Spinoza, who knew the name of that little gremlin thing on Press Your Luck, the Whammy. That's Remember that? The yes. Whammy. No Whammy. No Whammy. No Whammy. No whammy. No whammy. No whammy. No. <laughs>